Okay, welcome back. So uh, last time we began talking about sequences. Sequences, uh, we defined what it meant to be a sequence in a metric space. And uh, we talked a bit about um, how to think about sequences. How do you prove that a sequence converges, for instance, uh, convergence to a particular point? And so what I want to talk about today are, I want to say a little bit more about sequences just to um, uh, warm, warm you up a little bit. And then we want to talk about subsequences. What are the relationship between sequences and, and subsequences in particular? And uh, how, uh, what does it uh, mean to be a Cauchy sequence? And so that's the, uh, that's the plan for today. So let's just start up with a little bit of warm up. You recall from last time, we had a definition for what it means for a sequence to converge. So uh, we say Pn converges to P uh, if a certain uh, condition holds. Okay? And what is, that, what is it saying? Well, what it's saying is if you have a bunch of points of a sequence, and we'll say that that they converge if to let's say some point p if what's true well if no matter what epsilon you give me there is some point in the sequence beyond which all the points are within epsilon of p that's basically what that definition says right for every epsilon bigger than 0 there is an n an integer n such that any point in the sequence beyond n will uh, uh, live within epsilon of p. Okay? So that's what it means to converge. We write this in a couple of different ways. Pn converges. We write arrow p or limit of Pn is p. Okay? Okay, so um, and we explored that last time and, and saw many different consequences of this fact. Um, but let's, let's explore a little bit uh, what happens in uh, in R or in C. So let's consider, so maybe this is, let's just warm up. Suppose we have a sequence, uh, Pn, uh, let's say, consider sequences Sn and Tn uh, in, uh, okay, and these are sequences, so I'll write them as a collection here. Suppose these are in C. Okay? If you like, just think of them in the real numbers, if you wish. But anything I'm about to say will be true also in the complex numbers. And suppose that they're convergent sequences. So let's suppose that Sn converges to S and Tn converges to T. Okay? Then I claim the following things uh, are true. So here's a, a few theorems. Let's just see if we can prove them. Here's a theorem. I claim that if Sn converges to S and Tn converges to T, that in fact, here's a basic theorem, uh, I can say something about Sn plus Tn and what it converges to. Take a wild guess. S plus T. Good. Let's prove this. So how are we going to prove this fact? Now, I want to remind you that that definition up there, it basically begs us for every epsilon to find an n, right? So that's the goal, right? That's, this is the whole, uh, uh, the whole name of the game here. The important idea of this theorem, so, in, oh, so the important idea of this definition is always of that definition is always to, 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 to find an end. So, so to, convert, to, to show convergence, you have to find an end. You must find an end. So to show convergence, you must find an n. That's your goal, OK, for every epsilon. Okay? You're given epsilon. You must find an n for every epsilon. So let's see how that plays out in this proof. So we're going to prove that, that basic little theorem. How are we going to prove that? So let's see. What are we trying to do? We're trying to bound 
some distance, right? The distance between Pn and P. And so here we're trying to bound what distance? The distance between Pn and P, the proposed P, right? So we want to show that Sn plus Tn is close to S plus T, yes? Now, what do you know? What are you assuming, given the assumptions here? I heard some of you whisper. Go ahead and say it aloud. Excellent. Thank you, Keith. Sn is close to S, and Tn is close to T, right? You know that's small. You're trying to show that this difference is small, right? So um, let's, uh, before we do the proof, let's just say what the idea is. So the idea here is we want to bound. We want to make some, certain something small, Sn plus Tn minus S plus T. You're trying to show that this is small, yes? In fact, you're trying to show that's less than epsilon for some given epsilon, right? You want to know at what point in the sequence is that thing small? OK, so now what do you know is small? Sn minus S and Tn minus T, as Keith said, right? So can you see a way to bound this in terms of two things you know are small? Some of you are nodding yes. Show me, show me how. It's less than or equal to, just split it up and use the triangle inequality. And uh, the idea is to use this bound, right? OK. And now this is going to be small eventually. So this will have to be small eventually. OK. Now, of course, the two eventuallys might happen at different places, right? If you want this thing to be really small, it might not happen until n is bigger than 100. And if you want this to be really small, it might not happen until n is bigger than a million. So if you want this to be really small, you need n to be what? A million. OK? Sort of see where we're going with this. I have not written down any part of the proof yet. This is just the idea. OK, good. So let's start uh, the proof. So we'll start with, uh, by, by fixing an epsilon. So given an epsilon bigger than 0, would you agree, now we're just going to state what we know, which was what Keith observed, that Sn minus S is small eventually, using that definition. So given epsilon bigger than 0, to say that Sn converges to S means there exists a what? N. And I'm going to, in fact, because I'm going to, I see I'm going to need two different n's perhaps. I'll call one n1. There exists an n1. And in fact, I know another one's coming up, so I'll just go ahead and say that here too. And an n2 such that, OK, help. Well, such that if n is bigger than n1, uh, this is going to imply what? Sn minus s is less than whatever I want. Right? Of course, connected with that given epsilon, but whatever I want here. In fact, it doesn't have to be connected. I could say Sn minus S is less than 10. There is a point in the sequence where that's true, or less than 0.4. Right? But what I see that I need because of this idea is I want to show this is less than epsilon. So it would be nice if I could show that uh, these things are small enough so that their sum is less than what? Epsilon. So what would you like to pick? Epsilon over 2. And I know there's also a point in the, in the other sequence beyond which what? Tn minus t is what? Less than epsilon over 2 as well, right? Comma, period. OK, and of course, you'd write out implies if you were writing this out formally, as well as there exists. OK, okay now. Uh, we're in pretty good shape now, and so now your job to show convergence of the sequence Sn plus Tn is to find an n for that epsilon we started with. At what point in the sequence is this difference going to be less than epsilon? For the maximum. So we, we should tell the reader what that n is. Let, let, let big N be the maximum 